Castro. <laughs> what is he? You went to, you went to express out. <laughs> I went in express. <laughs> I can move it now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, selling? Huh? We reach? Oh, let's not talk here with any. <laughs> you want to set you up somewhere else? <laughs> when? Like this sunny side, you <laughs>
Are you ready? All right, thank you very much and good morning to you, uh, members of the media. Let me start by saying that uh, this is the third session we are having here at the Ministry of Labor attempting to conciliate and to bring uh, resolution to this outstanding negotiation. Let me also say that uh, for clarity that this is the second period of collective bargaining for which the union has been offered zero, zero, zero. Let me further clarify that the first period is currently before the industrial court for conciliation and that process is ongoing as we speak. Failing uh, proper resolution at conciliation at the industrial court, the, in that period of negotiations will go into open court and hearing. It is not there as yet. And therein lies an opportunity for the government to treat with that period, because that is the out, uh, first outstanding period, from 11 to 14. What we are treating with here is from 14 to 17, simply because from 11 to 14, the workers have not been given anything. Zero, zero, zero. And of course, lo and behold, for the period uh, 14 to 17, another set of zeros, zero, zero, zero. So you must understand that the uh, union and the workers will not be accepting all of those zeros or any of those zeros. And that is why we, when we propose to the company so that we can bring an end to all of this impasse negotiations for this period, we engage and we are at this point. There was this issue last week about the, the company not having the authority to start negotiations. Let me clear that up also. In the Industrial Relations Act, the union is, the OWTU is identified as the union, Petrotin is identified as the company. And both the union and the company, according to the law, the Industrial Relations Act, can meet at any time and negotiate issues with respect to workers covered under the respective bargaining units and through their collective agreements. That has always been the practice. So for any minister of government, prime minister at all, to say that they did not have the authority, that is simply wrong and misleading. They have the authority to engage and that is why we had proposed and they counter proposed. And that is why we rejected their counter proposal which said zero, zero, zero. Whether or not they got a mandate or instructions from wheresoever they're supposed to get that, that is not our business. Whether or not they were wrong to tell us zero, 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 that is not our business. Our business is to negotiate on behalf of the workers, of course, taking into context the company's situation. So I say this, I say this to say this, that we will not be deterred or put back or delayed or, or set back or in any form or fashion by any minister uh, in the press making statements to that effect that the company did not have the authority to negotiate and therefore on the basis of that we are not um, going to facilitate negotiations. We reject that outright. And so we said that to the ministry officials on the last occasion that if you find they had no authority and you want to fire them, fire them. Fire Petrotrin officials. That has nothing to do with us. But make sure that our negotiations are settled. And that if they did not have the authority, well, now you have the authority. And you having this in your hands now, having the authority, telling them they didn't, well, now we want to know exactly what it is you are offering. So the matter now is squarely out of... Uh, Petrochin's management hand and we are negotiating directly with instructions coming from the uh, cabinet and the ministers and that is what we are going to examine here this morning because the company asked on the last occasion for one week to get an update for, or to get a mandate or to get instructions from the uh, Minister of Finance since the Minister of Finance and the cabinet said that they didn't have the authority. Well, we expected them from then to now to have gone to where they're supposed to go to and get the instructions on what they should offer. We want to examine that this morning. If it's reasonable, we will examine it in its entirety and inform the workers and advise accordingly. If it's unreasonable, well, of course, we will reject it. 
if it's zero 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 that too is unreasonable most unreasonable and we will reject that but at no point in time we are going to satisfy for what is less or to compromise what is due to the workers on the basis of the significant output that they outlay every day and night to ensure that this country benefits from their input and therefore if we at this point the cabinet responds negatively and that they are not prepared to give the appropriate instructions the minister of finance if he's not prepared to give the appropriate instructions to bring these negotiations to a close we are going to initiate an effect effective strike action on petrotrin which action which action i wonder one i wonder one which action will be seen as a direct response to the government. So it will not just be a, a strike action against Petrotrin, it will be strike against the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And I say that without fear of contradiction or without even any fear. Yeah? And when we go down that road, and when we go down that road, mark what I'm saying, when we go down that road, that is a road we are not prepared to turn back. And so we advise at this point that, listen, we are at the brink of resolving these issues. You could indicate to us clearly, the one that is in the court, you will have an opportunity to call us and to conciliate into conclusion with that one. And this one, certainly, you can make an offer, either which way. But any way you take it, we are not prepared to accept any level of disrespect or disregard for the workers' input. Zero, zero is not enough. That's why we prepare to go. So, so it's from Christmas to Carnival, um, you could very well have a declaration of mass very, very early ahead of the real mass that is supposed to come. Yeah? So they need to think about that very, very carefully. The government needs to contemplate very carefully how they treat with workers. The whole question of equity, equality in treatment and so on. And how it is in one economy, you have a finance minister could have gone out on a limb, gone on a roadshow to make sure that he uphold a commitment given to settle wages for the majority of workers. But at the same time, the workers who risk their lives and limb night and day to ensure that everybody else benefit, he treats them with disrespect and disregard. I think that the Prime Minister and the government need to really pay close attention to that Minister of Finance because all of his advice, if they are prepared to take it, his advice, which advice would lead them down the wrong road, a road of no return, if they are prepared to take that advice, they should take what they will get with that advice. And we are prepared to give every and anybody what they deserve if they attack us. And right now we are feeling that the workers are a bit under attack and we will respond. Yeah? And we are preparing to respond. And when we respond and we withdraw our, our services, then and only then, you know, you, 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 sometimes you does not know what something is worth until you lose it. Yeah? Ask a lot of people about that. Sometimes you do not know what the value of something is until you lose it. Ask Kamla about that. And I say, absolutely no more. It is the same approach they were taking with reckless disregard and disrespect for those who make everything else possible. And they felt that they could have engaged in a battle that they could have won with the OWTU. Nobody will unjustly and unfairly attack the Alfie's Workers' Trade Union and get away on stage. Nobody. This morning's negotiations, we are going to get from the uh, Ministry of Labor what's supposed to be the company's response based on the advice coming from the coming from the uh, interministerial team or the cabinet. Which team said that they didn't have uh, authority, but which team now has the authority to put an offer on the table? So we want to hear what that offer is, and we are very close. Eh? We are very close to the declaration or the full declaration of war. Uh, because this is war. Uh, you withholding um, wage adjustments and workers not having the ability, like everybody else, to meet their rising costs and so on. This is war. And we are very close to declaring, um, making a declaration of war 
against all of whom are declaring war against us and the workers. And we are not afraid, we are well prepared. Yes, as you can see um, with a brief check of our history. Let me also say, as I said on the last occasion, that all of these um, cry cry baby businessmen and business community, the uh, one responsible for the um, San Fernando Business Chamber, who speaks loudly um, when workers want to get uh, any benefit or when workers would like to get an adjustment on their terms and conditions. But as soon as you get that adjustment on your terms and conditions, they carry up their prices. Indeed, even before that um, adjustment is made, they carry up their prices every day. So they don't come here like us and stand here like us or negotiate with the ministry, um, with the ministry conciliating or even strike or even struggle or even work hard. They just carry their prices up every day. And therefore, in a most unscrupulous uh, way, they price gouge, but they want to tell us, all of those chambers, they want to tell us that we should not get what is a decent uh, wage increase. Let me say to all of them, Petrotrin is in trouble because of past and present government. Petrotrin is in trouble because of bad management and poor leadership. Petrotrin is existing today, only held together only on the basis of the workers working yes. and yes. Yes. And in the, face, in the face of all of that, where workers work and where workers would have kept that company together, where the country would have benefited on the basis of that input, we demand no less than what is the fair share of our remuneration. Yes. And if we don't get it, if we don't get it, we will use all avenue within the ambit of the law to ensure that the workers uh, their claim to wage adjustment and so on that it is properly well uh, responded to so we meet again today uh, for the third time and we will examine and then we will take it from there going forward we will have an announcement to make tomorrow morning uh, should this so this issue didn't go the way it's supposed to go. We can meet outside the gates at Point Appear tomorrow morning in preparation for, um, for strike in the construction of our facility. You know, we um, very quickly we have the ability to put up these, um, these, um, these structures, these structures uh, described as strike camp, yeah? and um, which we will be housed for the next three months. And may I remind everybody that it is one union in Trinidad and Tobago that used the weapon of strike when it became necessary, only when it became necessary, but it's one union in the history of this uh, modern trade unionism for the last 10 or even 20 years that would have used legal strike action to get benefit for the workers. Struggle to that point, and we have done it not once, not twice, not three times, about four or five times within the last 10 years. And certainly in 2016, going into 2017, we are prepared to do it again once it is deemed fit and necessary. And I think we are very close to that point. So finally, all of those persons who would have said on their campaign trail in their quest to gain governance of this country from who was opposition leader then and who is prime minister now and all of the cabinet ministers all of them who condemned Kamla Passat because how she treated with disrespect the OWTU and the progressive trade unions and so on and workers in this country she did that but you would be worse off to fall in on the heels of what she did to come and do the exact same thing and for that you will pay no lesser a price. We assure you that there's a political yeah. price to be paid inside of all of this. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Um, they say prior to them receiving, they had gotten notice to be 12 feet away from lines that are run in the, in the, in the field, right? And now they came with notices telling them they only, they're supposed to be 24 feet. What is your personal take and how do you feel about... Is that a health and safety issue? No, no, well, I don't know if it's a health and safety issue. They just say that they have to move because 
they supposed they to be 24 feet. Yeah, yeah. The transmission feet. lines. And they have letters stating they were there supposed to be 12 feet away. So what is your yeah, they are close to transmission lines and so on. On the wrong line. Is it dangerous? I wouldn't know. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, other union. Well, once, well, well, once, uh, once the the requirement, the lawful requirement in terms of uh, the safety aspect of it, both for the operations and for the uh, human beings, uh, we would want to support any action that would put, take them away from harm's way. Yeah, yeah. They had any action. Sheet and order, they just shared the movie goal post to 12 to 20. Yeah, we're not sure, I'm not sure what the facts but, of that yeah, may be. From 12 feet to 20. No, we, know, we don't know, Ivan, what the facts of that might be. But I can say in general, the union supports fully the issue of implementing health and safety measures with respect to the operations, both for fence line communities and for also for active workers and so on. And therefore, um, any issue that treats with that uh, in accordance with the law, we, so we would support that. I don't know what the facts of that particular issue may be, but we would support that. Remember, remember Petrochin through bad management. The record is that they didn't run a safe operation. Eh? through bad management and they have a president of the company at this point in time who is not up to the task of running the company. That company needs a re a overhaul of the management. We need to reshuffle the management. Some people who are at the top of that company, it's operation now, those positions, they ought not to be there. They ought to be removed for petition to go forward. But when having done all of that, the one single thing that they must do for petition to be up and running is to settle these outstanding negotiations once and for all.
battles wrong. You know, a battle, a war, has many battles. And so throughout our history, we would have fought many battles. And the only reason why we were successful in all of those battles is because of the guidance of Almighty God. And his so you understand this morning, before I, I make my few comments, before we go upstairs in that place, you want to start with a word of prayer, thanking God for bringing us thus far and bestowing upon us might for health and strength and blessings and so on, so that we can meet together in the name of peace, in the name of justice, in the name of fear, pain, in the name of equity, in the name of peace and safety, in the name of a proper adjustment for the petrol train workers, all of them, etc. So, let's get um, someone to just lead us. Let me ask you what to do a prayer. It's important that it always give God thanks and blessings. But it's the smallest thing. You know, don't let the big thing, the smallest thing. And just for us being here today, those of us, we are here because we are conscious. We are conscious of the occasion and, and, and what this, this is about. You know, so we want to thank God for bringing us here thus far. Yes. Most merciful and ever wise God. Yes. Father God, as we stand before your presence, dear God, we stand before your presence with no help, no strength of our own, dear God. But Father God, we want to thank you, God, for this present time and hour. For you have kept us through the night watch past and gone. From our pillow days, even from last Thursday until now, you have kept us. And Father God, we are here again, dear God. Because you say, oh God, by the sweat of thy brow, man shall be prayed, dear God. And Father, this morning, dear God, we don't want what we want. We want what is rightfully ours. What is just. You know, what we want is what is just. We don't just want anything, dear God. Father God, and we ask that by your guidance, with the executive, dear God, they are only as strong as the support they have behind them. Yes. And this morning, oh God, we ask that we are not here just for face material to say that we were seen. But we want to be here, oh God, to support their God, to support to the very end. And Father God, we ask that you give us that discipline, that will power, that understanding, dear God, that transformation, dear God, to do what is necessary, dear God. Father, and those of us who lack understanding, dear God, we ask that they increase understanding. We ask that they increase wisdom, oh God, and knowledge, dear God, for the benefit, not of today only, dear God, but for the future of this organization. And Father God, we ask that by your whip and by your guidance, dear God, that you direct the negotiating team, dear God. And Father, we ask that you break down every barrier and every chicken, dear yes, God. Yes, yes, yes. Father, for you say that nothing, oh God, that is against you can stand, dear God. Yes. And Father God, we know, oh God, that we are just in what we ask for, dear God. We know, oh God, Father, and all the detractors, dear God, for whatever reason, who doesn't understand that the cycle of life, dear God, and what turn the economy of God. Lord, we pray for them at the same time, dear God. So, Father God, we bless the homes left behind, dear God. And even in the season, dear God, Christmas season, which signifies, dear God, you know, some of the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, dear God. We want to thank you, God, for the poor sons, dear God, who commit themselves, dear God. Dear God. And we are going to bless the home bounty fully, dear God, continuously and consistently, dear God. And Father, we rebuke every negative force, every sickness, every disease, oh God, every yeah. negative energy that comes against them, dear God, comes yes, against us, God. dear God, yes, this morning. God. You know, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we speak wisdom, we speak life, we speak knowledge, we speak peace, we speak understanding, dear God. We speak overcoming into yes. our life, dear God. And Father, even though at times we speak long suffering, dear God, to overcome the challenges that we have to overcome. And Father, this morning again, we want to thank you and ask that we direct the food to the Jesus' son. Amen. 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 Who would always be with us? Strong. I recall Liberty and Spain, all our groups, our marches and protests and victory celebration, and wherever the union gathered, that government would make sure that it's present. Fortunately, it was there. Saturday morning, this is 
Understanding of what this is about, found it absolutely necessary to install your presence here this morning to make a statement. Many statements are made, comrades. Many statements are being made concerning these negotiations by persons who are supposed to be in the know, persons who are in the know, persons who are not in the know, from persons outside, all over. But the one profound statement that I think that we must underscore here today is the statement made by all of you saying regardless of what all of them say, you are serious about your business, which is the settlement of the nation. You would know, every single worker here, every single comrade here, know by virtue of where you work, whatever field, what, if, if it's in the refinery at Point of Pierre, whatever fields, in Trinma, offshore, in the producing fields, wherever, that individually, when you add up your contribution, collectively, you make what is possible today, that structure they call the Petroleum Company of Trinidad. In other words, without you, without all of the workers, there would be no petrol train. And as I often say, we have tested time and time again. Indeed, we are on the brink of testing it. And that is that you can have the management alone by themselves. You will have no petrol train. You can have the workers alone without the management, and you will have a petrol train up and Of this goal, to once again illustrate to all of them and the country at large that without the workers there will be no pressure. Change. In other words, if they did not give us what is just and fair and decent and what is due to us rightfully, we will have that that same statement be proven for yet another time. Because you see, we ought to be self-respecting. We ought to respect the fact that we leave our homes every day. Respect that everybody else has to respect that. When they are going on whatever they go on every day, every night, when on the holiday, and I am certain that we have ship workers here, and I'm going to speak directly to all workers. But here it is, when on the holiday, the holiday that just went, that what four days holiday, where everything was not normal, where people was eating the pig and ham and lamb and jam, where everybody else was celebrating, you had petrol train workers. Leaving the confines of their homes at all quality of the all of the And you're going to work in a situation where it is not entirely safe. You're going to work in a situation where the one thing on your mind is to make sure that you produce and honest their work. That which they work when you produce it, everybody else will benefit. So check this. While they are at home celebrating, are working, you are keeping this company going so that they can continue to celebrate, so that they can co co continue to enjoy a particular lifestyle and so So what is wrong? What is wrong with you standing up and saying, hey, you see this? 
something has to be wrong with this equation. Everybody else who benefited through what you do and through increased wages and so on, but you not benefited. I'm saying that to you to re reinstall, to re-energize the commitment within all of us here. To say to everybody else, to hell with everybody else. instructions from the government, the union can file an industrial relations offense and bring them right here to the ministry. And at that point, just what we're doing now, we will be doing. So as I said, our nonsense, they're talking, and they know that, you know, especially Minister Young, that we could have filed an industrial relations offense for failure to meet and treat if the company had refused to meet or responded to our proposal. And therefore, what they did was right. Whether or not we're supposed to get mandate, that is not my business. What you did is you responded to my proposal. The union proposed, you counter propose. But the problem in your counter proposal is that you say zero, zero, zero. So we could not have agreed at all. And therefore, on the basis of what is before the court, zero, 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 and what is here, we rejected that. We had one meeting, one session, because we had the proposal. And we perused that proposal from cover to cover. That's their counter proposal. We propose it from cover to cover. And at that meeting in Beaumont Hill, we said to them, is there any change in the position you have in your counter proposal and what you came here to discuss today? And the answer was no. That what is uh, contained in the counter proposal and what they came to present is the same thing, meaning zero, zero, zero. So then we said immediately, that this is an official meeting. This is an official negotiating meeting. And therefore, at this point, the union is informing you officially that no further purpose can be served by discussing here. And therefore, we ought to go to the other level 
which other level is having broken down, we go to here for conciliation. Because you see, we understand it. And we understand that if we didn't move swiftly enough, at this point in time, we could end up having to come from behind. And therefore, we came to the ministry and we began to conciliate. And that at every juncture in that conciliation, we were assured by the conciliator representing the Minister of Labour that this issue is properly before the Minister and the Ministry of Labour. So I'm saying all of this to educate comrades because you see, the, the foolish talk, the gain was, I can't understand, not for the hell of me, how common sense does just disappear and let stupidness take place in people's heads when that time comes. So good, good comrades, who's supposed to know better, does entertain all kind of stupid talk and so on. Nonsense talk from people who don't know better. Mm -hmm. So a man on the street will meet you until the union, the union gets a 9% on the refuse. What nonsense is that? He on the street, he don't know, but he telling you that, and you will say, but you know, it's true, right? <laughs> How the hell that could be true? You could give him that response, you have to tell him, hey, no, 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 no. You don't know. I know, because had that proposal been made, certainly, you would have been informed because it would have been for your consideration. That has not happened. And next stupid talk is about how you're going to get 100,000 100, more. <laughs> how the hell has come up with that? I, I, I can't understand. I want to get the same stupid talk from all over the place. I am saying that to you this morning, Governor, because I see the agency about this thing. I know this thing went to the end. He has some experience in that. He has to know it, begin to know it, begin to end. And if it didn't end, you know how. Other things went to end for other people, such as the fierceness of the conviction that we have in this. But I'm saying that I'm telling you all of this for you to tell them to back off with the nonsense talk where we focus. Back off with them stupid talk. We know what we're supposed to do to get what we're supposed to get. Because what we're supposed to get is what we deserve. And therefore, when at this point, yeah, having been properly placed before the minister, we are well within the law. And well within the law means a number of things. The first thing is that if today, today when we meet, we didn't get a good gauge, a good gauge that this thing is going to be settled once and for all, that a good gauge that they are prepared to treat with, you know, they could say, listen, you have to put two periods, huh? two periods of collective bad, one before the court, before the court for conciliation. It is not before the court for open hearing, meaning that at the court, they do just like what is being done here. They, they appoint a judge that is a conciliator, sits down and he listens and so on, and he determines on the basis of, of what has been said, and what is right and just, and what is benchmark, and so on, the advice. But they don't have to take the advice. And so we conciliate, and then if that didn't work out, we go to open court. We are not, we are not at that stage as yet. So there's still an opportunity for them to say, listen, okay, we want to treat with that. Herein lies the opportunity at this point still. But if you're not dealing with that, and you're not dealing with this, well then, you're not dealing with us. And if you're not dealing with us, you feel like we don't exist. And if we don't exist, well then we have to do to make sure that they don't have to exist. We have to take it to another level. We are not prepared. We must not be prepared in no way, shape, or form to say we're going to send this down to the court out. The sun was down there, they're waiting. They're waiting on the, on the wheels of justice. The role has within me. Right. That is not what this is about. This is about this period. But if it is that that last period end up there and be waiting, we must not be prepared to send this down there also. So when the time comes and it expires here, and we say, listen, you have had all of the time to treat with this, and you have not treated with it. You continue, we came at you and you're still at you. You said it didn't have authority, but you had authority, and you didn't put in place a proper offer. We must be prepared to take the ultimate action. Wherever he live, wherever she live, whoever he support, whoever she support, every self-respecting worker, present here or otherwise, have to understand that you see this period, this is the last train. It's on no other train coming. Go up on the, on the promenade, you see that train ain't even moving. That train ain't moved long time. See that no other train, the top are up doing that, they scrap that. 
no other train coming. The last train to leave, Sando. The last train to leave, Sando. You want to be on board on that train because that train is a justice train. It's a train to recognize what you do day and night. It's a train to treat with you as they treated with the rest of them. So it cannot be, will not, shall not, cannot be that you beg the pie. Everybody else eating, smiling and sun, and telling you, it's very nice, it tastes nice, and you can't get even a taste of that pie. Zero is not a taste. So we have to be prepared to take what is ours. And as we, we have always said, and we maintain, without fear of contradiction, without fear of condemnation, without fear of confrontation by those against us, we maintain that if we can bake the pie, if we prepare and we give everybody else the benefit of our labor, and we cannot get it, nobody else must get it. <laughs> sort of construction because it's the rainy season and we don't want when the time comes the notice itself for us to be built. You know many of building when rain falling that can have too much difficulty. So we want to have the construction ahead of everything else. So let's see what that what they come with today. Let's see what they come with today. Let's hear them. Let's hear what the instruction is they haven't had the authority now because when we broke up they went to the Minister of Finance who said they didn't have authority to get the authority. And we wouldn't be caught up in no stupid talk because that's what I wanted. We're talking about who authority and who authority. No, no, no. The workers of Petrochim have every authority to demand what is just and right for the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They kill me little sister by the name of young Beverly. The plan of the ambush her, they destroy her mercilessly. Jerry go and sleep in, I say, I... when you miss a policeman, Jerry snatch him away. They looking for Jerry Co. Jerry Co. where they? They come up at Lopino. Jerry slip away. They come up at Las Bajo. Jerry Co. where they? Then they run cross the one repo. Jerry slip away. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Everybody want to know the Jericho from Lopino was saying they run down to Hubuto. Jericho where they? Then they run cross to Mayaro. Jerry slip away. 